Hey everybody, what's up? What's going on? And welcome back. Can't drop here again today. So today I am bringing you guys a video on tips and tricks for the survival hunter. Now this is just going to be a generalized tips and tricks video for what I've found out for the most part and why I use certain things like what my rotation is and what pets I use because I've been getting a lot of comments about that in the videos I've been posting. So I'm going to take this time and I'm going to answer as many of your questions as I possibly can. I had a comment that was left that asked me what pets I use for survival. Now for PVE circumstances, I have two, ferocity and tenacity. We're going to go over tenacity. So tenacity gives you the 5% hit points to your maximum health, and it gives you the buff for you and your pet survival of the fittest, which decreases any damage taken by 20%. Certain tenacity pets have different, say, special abilities, like the toad that you find in Arden Wield. It increases its dodge chance by 30%. The stag that you find basically anywhere is can cure itself of one poison, one disease, or one magic effect. Now, here's another one. If you wanted to use a tank pet for PvP to get the 5% health boost, you can go for Horridon in the Throne of Thunder, which does not have any super special ability, but a mortal wounds effect. So you still get the 5% health increase, but you get a mortal wounds effect as well. And it is actually quite a tanky pet. The Undead Oxen in Maldraxxus it falls below 40% health and it gains 60% damage reduction. That's good for 15 seconds. Now, I don't really use tenacity pets unless I'm having to solo an elite. If I'm soloing an elite, my mend pet does 50% of my pet's maximum health. So that should be plenty equivalent enough in order to heal my tank pet, especially during dodge chance increase or anything like that. For questing and stuff like that, I use ferocity pet. Now, ferocity pets give you 10% leech buff and they give you the usable ability for primal rage, which is just another word for bloodlust. It's just the hunter's version. Some ferocity pets like wind serpents from Bastion come with a dodge increase. Cats, they have stealth and a dodge increase. Scale hides that you get from Mist of Pandaria areas, they have scale shield that decreases all damage taken by 50% on a one minute cooldown. Mainly most of the ferocity pets you will find have a mortal wounds effect for healing decrease, but or they will have a movement impairing decrease to slow your enemies. Now, I mainly use ferocity pets in dungeons, especially this expansion's dungeons, due to the fact that the 10% leech AoEing a lot of the time really helps the healers keep up with other people in the party rather than focusing on you. Cause yeah, you are a bit squishy. So when you do get hit, you do get hit. And having that little extra healing is really nice. Also, you don't always have somebody in the group that has a bloodlust. So you having the ability to just call out a pet if you're using a tenacity pet to call out a ferocity pet and then all of a sudden just cast primal raid now you have your bloodlust up so you're good to go there it counteracts anybody that doesn't have it pvp wise just to go over a quick briefing i always go cunning for the most part due to the fact that the eight percent movement speed buff is really nice plus the usable master's call so that you or your pet are immune to roots and slows for four seconds that's just a no-brainer. Everybody's going to try and root you, slow you, stun you, and get you stuck in one spot. So the more ability you have to kite people out, the better off you are. In the future, I will be bringing out a full rotational guide for the specific specs that I will and build, well, the specific builds that I will be posting for future videos, etc. I got two more builds I want to work on for you guys, and then I will be posting... A rotational guide for each of those so to help everybody out in any case you guys had questions etc now with that being said i had another comment that asked do you bother getting three stacks of tip of the spear all the time i find myself flipping between raptor strike and kill command just to get the 25 percent damage bonus or is it worth it to drain your focus to build the three stacks of tip of the spear Right, that is a very good question. Now, this is a rotational thing. And I had another comment from another viewer 
Nika, I think. I believe, I'm, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right, but Nika asked what my rotation is. Now, both of these go hand in hand. My rotation is based off of where I'm positioned, what's going on, and really the main part about it, which is why I love Survival Hunters so much, is your rotation switches if you are using Wildfire Infusion with the Wildfire Cluster, or with the Wildfire Talent. So you have two bombs you can use and two different bombs you can use. So with... We'll just start with the first bomb. By starting off with a pheromone bomb, I prioritize 90% of the time when I use my pheromone, pheromone bomb, like you will see in this video, I go to 40 or below focus. I use my pheromone bomb and then I spam out some kill commands to get my focus back. Because the hard part is, is you don't want, just because you get a 25% damage increase, you don't want to just waste your focus regen when technically Raptor Strike does more damage than a Mongoose Bite in general. So just by using your Raptor Strike instead of using a Mongoose Bite on the first hit, you're doing more damage in general to keep your average DPS up. So the way I think about it is when I drop my Pheromone Bomb, I'm usually below 50 focus. So I can get two to three kill commands out before it becomes a problem. And then I can get my two to three tip of the spear stacks and I can get my maximum damage without focus capping myself for a too long or over focus capping just wasting it and that's when it becomes the problem so for me like I just said with pheromone bomb it, it really is gonna vary on what my situation is what cooldowns I have available that's the real big thing with survival that's why I love it so much because your rotation will vary off of what you have available to you. Even with the kill command raptor strike combo. So if you have no bombs, no nothing, go ahead. Use a kill command into a raptor strike. You know, just get that base damage. Other than that, you have other abilities that will value just as much as your raptor strike without a kill command increase. So with shrapnel bomb, it's basically as your... Let's play a game. Your tank just got into a group of four guys and you have shrapnel bomb up so what you do is you as you're running to the group you dot them up with serpent sting and while you're doing that you're losing focus so you get one to two kill commands off get your focus back get all that set up for you once that happens throw your shrapnel bomb or if you have chakrams like i do throw your chakrams throw your shrapnel bomb so throw your bomb carve and then spam your raptor strike tab targeting through enemies because you want to apply as many of the stacks of bleeds from your shrapnel bomb to as many of the targets as possible. Throwing your chakrams will generate the focus to help you get an extra one or two raptor strikes off, which is awesome. That's extra bleed damage. So it's more AoE, more consistent DPS throughout the fights. That's my shrapnel bomb version. With volatile bomb, this is where it gets extremely tricky. Depending on how many targets there are to AoE, and if you have volatile bomb available at the start of the new encounter, plus my thoughts are, is how long do I have left on my serpent sting? Do I have time to get a kill command or two off so I can build more focus and build more DPS because of bleeds from my Bloodseeker talent? Or what do I do? This is all things that are running through my head as I'm looking at what my rotation should be and what I should be doing. With that being said, I'm going to run you through a scenario. Say you have five targets and you're trying to do as much AoE damage as possible. I would hit all five targets with serpent sting because it has an extended dot timer now so now you have more time to get off more serpent stings hit all five targets with a serpent sting your volatile bomb is up you hit two mobs with kill command that way you get your bleeds going and you have your extra attack speed then you throw your bomb carve so that you get the decrease on that one and then you throw your next bomb based off of what your next bomb is is hopefully it's a pheromone bomb and then you just kill command bleed them all while your serpent sting is still ticking because your volatile bomb just refreshed your duration. It's a very, very complicated rotation in that aspect, depending on what you have available for you. If your carve is off cooldown and you can get carve off, literally if you're AoEing, you should be getting you should be using carve every time it's off cooldown 
to get wildfire bombs back as soon as possible. That is your biggest AOE damage in this build. And then I had another comment saying, you know, he was having trouble with, you know, rotating the heals for PVP as a survival. So my answer to that is mending bandage is great even if you can't get a heal off from it now if you have trap up and you trap them you can disengage out or cheetah out and then mending bandage yourself that will take away poisons bleeds and diseases that stops all dot damage from you unless it's magical damage and if you're running survival tactics or the craven stratagem legendary you should have no issues removing magic effects especially with both of those attached plus mending bandage, you should never be dotted ever. But as for the rotation of your heals, it's really gonna be based off of the situation that, or the situations that you could be put in as, as a survival hunter. Like if you're really going up hardcore against a rogue or a druid or something like that, your, your mending bandage is key. Every time it's off cooldown, you should be using it for the most part just to wipe the bleeds and the poisons off of you, just to reduce their overall damage for damage per second. Your exhilaration right now, you can get a conduit that basically, I, I believe it's an endurance conduit, will leave a ticking dot on you after using it which I have on my hunter right now, it heals another 11% of my total maximum health. So total, I get 41% increase, like total maximum health regen. When I use that ability, it's just really nice to have. But it's all about practice, practice, practice. The more you practice, the more you become adjusted to certain circumstances while fighting certain classes, you'll do a lot better. So just keep practicing, don't lose hope. And with that being said, I hope that answered your questions. Any questions anybody will have in the future. If not, leave me a comment below and I'll make sure I get back to you guys. But Make sure if you have not already and you made it this far, hit that subscribe button, smash that like button, and you guys know it. I'll catch you in the next one. Can't drop out.